Jimmy, are we on? Jimmy, are we live? We are live. Yay! There's no Jimmy, guys. <laughs> Direct all complaints directly to me, where I can ignore them, or pretend to ignore them and then secretly cry in the corner. I don't know. I haven't gotten any complaints, so I guess... <laughs> I'll find out what my reaction will be, but know that if it's the latter or the second, I, I won't be admitting that anymore. You won't trick me into that again. Well, here we are. This is the 26th District Police and Patrol Station. Clearly not in use, but you can see how it looks today. I don't know why they would do this to these windows. I really don't, especially since it's such an ugly fashion. I you really want people to stay out, huh? But yeah, that's your modern uh, building here. And a lot of these, the official photographs of the historic places are actually ones from the survey still. This is just a random house in Philadelphia that's on the list, as many of them are. And you can see usually when it's a residence, you know, they've been up kept kind of nicely. Um, this one's been turned into a high school. Some of these pictures are quite grainy, but for that I, I'm deeply ashamed. Like this one here, a lot of these have been, oh, the ornamentation has been reduced. A lot of the accoutrements have been removed, and it looks very much more modern, especially uh, on the lower levels. At the top, the top it's a little bit more difficult to do, I suppose. You can see these things gradually break off and don't get replaced. All the uh, additional things up top, the bulbs, it all just gets taken apart, dismantled and not replaced. <laughs> Ludicrously thin building here. This looking much more modern, and you wouldn't even know it was historic except for these sort of stylistic little bits that are left. Kind of tragic. This one, obviously, we're just not doing stuff like this today. I mean, this stuff stands out even more so today than ever before to me. But yeah, this one's boarded up, of course. This is the inside of the old iron furnaces. Very hard to imagine why they would need to make such a building like this, and really a testament to the masonry at the time that they could, that this would be standing still. My God. Just made a brick? So impressive. I don't know about an iron furnace. This is the interior of the Grand Court, which needed, for some reason, an organ like this with an angel on the top with two trumpets as if they had two mouths maybe they did talking out of both sides of them <laughs> i don't know not making sense to me why this organ's in there but whatever well not making sense in the context of the original story and this is a great photograph of the church completely obscured by trees so shout out to that photographer good job on missing the point entirely joe fraser's gym is now a home gallery and for furniture and bedding put that chair down buster you guys try to steal our freaking patio shit this one was the meyerhoff sun and company building in Pottstown, not in use anymore. Shocking. So it looks like it's been turned into a hotel with perhaps some businesses on the bottom floor, or maybe it's an apartment complex. I don't know. I'm just guessing. And you can still see how these just, you know, these stand out. I mean, they, we're just not making stuff like this anymore. We wouldn't even be concerned with the appearance of buildings anymore. Anything to save a buck. This one's kind of hilarious with this thing on the top here. Looking like an old uh, whiskey jug. Not really sure what this building is, besides abandoned. And wow, look at the modern artists of the day have really added their mark. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for this. You'll be remembered. Thank you for adding to the degradation of your own habitat. I don't know what this sort of disguise is supposed to be or whatever, but this is the uh, Brown Hill and Kramer House, whoever they were. This is kind of interesting. This is allegedly a bridge. Or what's left of a bridge, uh, a cable bridge, which I don't know if it actually ever was to, or if it's just something that you sort of like hand over hand went across. So, I don't know, but it's allegedly a chain bridge. National Guard Armory, still in use. A monument. And you see here, I'm trying to give Pennsylvania the fair shake and letting its own properties defend themselves. And uh, this is in the process of being painted, I believe. Either that or one side really gets the brunt of the, uh, the weather. Or perhaps it's two different people live there and one cares and one doesn't. Or maybe one cares and has a little bit more money and this one cares and has no money. I don't know, damn it. And you do it. You sit here and make shit up when you look at these pictures and try to figure out the world just from one friggin' picture. You do it. <laughs> here we got a, an, a flame eternal held up by these tiny poor men who astounded and you can see the craftsmanship here in these old buildings and it's just they they stand out they stand out we're not building stuff like this today this is a via maria i don't know what it's being used for the old equestrian statue that we find all over the world with often fictional stories attached to them. The York Dispatch Office. <laughs> it looks kind of funny with that column. But, and I believe tied into the old way of passing energy through into these buildings. But up the veins, up the veins, pass through. What do I know? I know that these buildings are right birdie. I know if I had the opportunity to own one, oh, I would. And I would do a damn good job of preservation. This here is what we would call sort of vintage, our vintage, you know? And, and it's just such a crude and ugly sign compared to the 
old. Ah! I've been shut down, America. This is an outrage. Where were we? The signage that the old world had to offer. Something, something. We'll fix that in post. Or we won't. Who cares? Another great picture of something. Now leasing. So you can see that some of these properties were upkept rather nicely. Many of them, like this one, just really stand out. This one has an impressive array of garbage out here in the front that they wanted us to see. They knew we were coming to photograph it. And, you know, then you get this one. How cool is that? Again, they just stand out. I mean, they, you know, they look... What the fuck? I'll tell you why it keeps happening. My hands are numb. Got this little bit of a temple or something poking out of the... This is Alden Park Manor, whatever that means. Hints of this old world, whether it's this little block, whether it's this, whether it's this, it just, you can, you can just get a hint of the majesty that was. Without those, it wasn't for the facade. This is what I call a birthday candle building. It's my own name. That's not architecturally correct or whatever, but it, because it looks as if these had candles on them that were, had melted down and the wax just sort of dripping off, like, you know? So this is what I call a birthday candle building. And you see these everywhere. I mean, there's, every city in the world has these from this era. But without these sort of little additions, these little land bridges and stuff, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't be amiss in thinking that, you know, without that top piece here, you would just think it's a regular building. But to add that on the top, it would just be so much more expense that there had to be a function for it. it had to be a reason. Uh, they don't do it today because they, we think there's no function to it. Or we would. We don't really build these except in an homage to the style. If we're trying to get that particular look, then we'll do it. You only really see it in old world buildings. In the survey, I don't think it was painted brown then. And I certainly won't be trusting anything that comes out of those doors. The old Edison Hotel. And many of them bricks just been painted over. I and mean, You can't even tell that they're anything different or special at all. This one ma maintained its uh, orange. Ornaments well, very well. I mean, look at the in the top. It's got the spikes here. The <clears throat> lightning rods, we're told. Only it's more like this, if you ask me. But I digress. So you see, I'm giving you a fair shake, Pennsylvania. You can show the world how delightful your buildings truly are. And your preservation of uh, <laughs> old historical structures is actually quite remarkable. You do care, you see? Although I would say that the 3,000 or so that have been destroyed, also on your watch, Pennsylvania. A ridiculous high school. Give me a break. A junior high school at that. Just goes to show you that these education systems have been in on it since the beginning. You should view the banking system the same way as you view the insurance system, same way as you view the educational system, same way as you view the colleges, same way as you view the government. All set up to oppress you, all set up to keep you down, and all set up to push a particular narrative. The narrative being that this is to be ignored. Ignored. We'll tell you what these things were here for. We'll tell you who put them there. And look at that. Just like the old uh, star forts out there with a the little... Uh, but no, 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 no. Nope. Don't look at that. These were built by men who came here from the 1800s, from Ireland and Scotland and everywhere. There was a famine and they had nothing. They got here with nothing. And they magically made bricks by the billions. And they magically made these railroads. And they put them everywhere. And, uh, this is allegedly a foundation. Okay. Foundation for bullshit. Not sure why we're showing these. I guess to show the interior of the building is constructed of logs. No, we thought it was made of gold particles. Or moon rocks, even more. But yeah, Pennsylvania loves its old structures. It would never abandon them to the elements or anything like that. You can see the red and white stripe, which is common when it comes to radio stations, power stations as well as barbershop poles and candy canes. What am I implying? That the building is made out of candy canes? Perhaps I am. Maybe it's all candy. These are made of those strawberry candies that your grandmother used to have on the table when you bite them, there's bits of gushy strawberry in them. I call them the OG gushers. This is made up of those little pastel Easter eggs that are sort of chalky. Everything is candy. This is made of lemon bars. Imagine it, Sansa. Lemon bars. This one's made entirely of sugar cubes. These are little toothpicks that are painted white. Wait a second. That's not candy. You cheater. An old world church looking more and more strong as the years go by. Which is quite opposite from the amazing drywall that we have today. Which literally a car can just drive right through. I like to see a car drive through that. Yeesh. I know I was trying to paint the picture that Pennsylvania cares. <sighs> Pennsylvania doesn't care about us. Not unless they live there, of course. And they're gonna take great care of it, of course. Who wouldn't? This is a little Harry Potter house. And in Philly. ah, I love those flowers. Some things remain. Far cry from some of the amazing ones that we've seen in the survey. Some of the just, just the breathtaking ones. The Actually, the, the biggest and most amazing outside of the Capitol building, they're gone. They long gone. I mean, some of these factory ones still remain, probably only because they can't tear them down without causing a 
fucking ruckus. But I mean, clearly no shortage of uh, fixer-uppers. No shortage indeed. I suppose someone could be living there, although I don't know exactly who. Maybe some wizard or mad chemist is holed up in there somehow, somewhere, but personally, I doubt it. This is one of the old locks. Along the Allegheny River, still in Shervish. You can just tell this was not built by modern man. We don't do this sort of thing. Everything we learned, I feel like, was from the old world. You know, that's basically what archaeologists seem to be doing. To be digging shit up and learning how it was built. And then building their own little fake little shit around it and being like, Oh, look at Chicken Arrow. Look at this. This god has a jackal on his head. Uh, it's weirdly one of the only things preserved. What are those black markers over there? Now, pay no attention to those black markers. <laughs> Usually the thing they push out in front, like, look at this. Montezuma's cast. And it's some little mud hut. Really, if you let your eyes focus and look at what's behind it, that's where the real mystery is. I think the mud hut. It's a massive structure behind the mud hut. This guy's walking with purpose. Oh, I'm gonna get me a hot dog if it kills me. Nothing's gonna get in my way. <laughs> You're almost there, buddy. Oh, this one we had to do a drawing of because, sadly, it's not there anymore. Although similar, this is a different armory. This is Pottsville. This is Cornville. Or Cornellville. This one's in Latrobe. Latrobe, where have I heard that name? Oh, that's right. Old Latrobe. The beer, the rolling rock. They, uh, they claim on the side of the bottle or can that the beer inside is straight from the glass line tanks of old Latrobe, which sounds to me suspiciously like a urinal, which would make more sense when compared with the flavor of rolling rock, which I'd say has a fair hint of urinal on the nose and on the back end, or something equally as disagreeable. This is an amazing old sub. Not looking like something we would make in the modern times, really. Looking kind of steampunk. Also kind of terrifying. I find subs to be a little harrowing. Be down inside of one of those, the pressure mounting. Ooh, an old pineal gland here on a fountain. No doubt uprooted from its original position. It's all feng shui. And no, I know what this fence means. Usually they're gonna tear it down. How dare you? How how dare you? Fuck you, Pennsylvania. Fuck you. Hmm. I do like the cast iron work, and I do wonder what the point of this is, other than that it's impressive. Like I imagine many of the sites around the country to be, The world is mine! You can't have it! There's probably a nice mix of abandoned and just barely hanging on. Yeah, something tells me that this isn't the original bridge. It's broken off or something. Is this Michter's Distillery? No way! Or at least it was. Now it's called Bomberger's Lebco. But maybe this is the old uh, distillery, which would make sense because of that moonshine jug looking thing. Apparently now it's nothing, but... That's too bad. Well, in honor of that, I have to pour myself a glass of Michter's, as it is a fine whiskey indeed. Have I given Pennsylvania a fair shake? Is it relatively interesting to see these buildings in a mushroom? Or, uh, maybe something else. But it's interesting to see these in their modern form after looking at them from pictures of 100 years ago. And, you know, these buildings have held up very well. The ones that have been taken care of for 100 years. I mean, even the ones that haven't. The actual building has been held up well. I mean, this one's got more window panes in it than the old ones did. So someone's out here doing something, right? And you really went out of your way to be a douchebag, didn't you? And it turns out that not everyone in Pennsylvania... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I spoke too soon, but not everyone in Pennsylvania doesn't give a shit about their history. Some people really have preserved things remarkably well, and other people have basically no manners or respect or even creativity, for that matter. Again, I don't have anything against street art. The emphasis being on art. This is equivalent to a four-year-old scribbling on the closet or the hallway, which does nothing but make someone else clean it up. It just shows the level of intelligence. Either improve your craft and make it worthy enough so it doesn't have to be power washed off of there, gravel blasted, or don't do it. Or at least put your full name, if you're so proud of it, so we can congratulate you and welcome you to the class of retards, of which there have been millions and there will be millions more. Oh, I'm sorry, no, the word's not PC, but it used to mean something different when I was younger, okay? Back in my salad years. First I was like, you know what? Despite this building being destroyed, you know, the windows are all really remarkably, uh, you know, intact. And then I realized... There are no fucking windows. <laughs> These are all empty. Because there's a few hanging on. <laughs> that is some dedication to actually get up there and bust out every window, you know? I'm actually kind of impressed. This one, they just knocked the whole damn frame out. If you're gonna destroy something, I suppose be thorough about it. Destroy something, go create something. There's enough destruction in this world without having to add more to it. Hopefully they're just refinishing this and not destroying it. But, you know, based on what has happened in the past, the fact you need to break these up even, why'd you need to board even these up? I mean, someone got up there and smashed them? What buttholes? Someone someone who's taken these is really doing an artsy job of it, and I really appreciate it, whoever they are. These, pic these pictures, by the way, most of them are taken, like, just this is basic, this is a really lazy way of research. These 
are all from like most of these I should say are from Wikipedia or some other sites like that that just show the historical registered places so not really in depth here I just wanted to give Pennsylvania a fair shake but also I do think it's curious to see what these have become over the years first it was a fire station probably then it became a barbecue I guess and now it's just a place where uh, birds hang out particularly brave birds too because they don't seem to be particularly scared of plastic owls this one has a garden on the top that's a great idea although I think it'd be even cooler to have a garden in here with the vines chilling out of these that's it find all churches repurpose all of them as hanging gardens hanging gardens of Babylon speaking of babbling on oh this must be a fort the armory oh yes of course as if anyone's ever attacked this place not in 300 years maybe this one being made to look much more like the Candy Kingdom. Yeah, not sure how I feel about that. But it's not mine, so who cares about my opinion? Nobody, that too. Not even me. Alfred's Victorian Restaurant. Adorable. And this just looks like it's going to be here forever. The craftsmanship is just... It's just fantastic. Well done. Well done, Alfred. I'd love to dine at your establishment. I'd also love to go sign out what's going on in these windows here. This one looks like it's spitting out. That's where concrete planters came from. This little mouth spits them out. <laughs> out here, all that's left of the bird Liebhardt site is just this chimney. Which, if you believe the Civil War books, they just built these in the middle of fields because they were going to hang out there for a while. <laughs> As if Americans are stupid enough to fall for that stuff, which we do all the time. <laughs> give us some credit. I mean, we haven't earned any, but give, give it to us anyway. The Christian Science Center. I didn't think those terms went together very well in the modern era. And that is quite the impressive church building. Quite the impressive, uh, nothing, I guess. There's no bridge there anymore. This is what it used to look like, the Cold Spring Bridge. And now it's this. This to this. Which one do you like better? Who wore it best? This is the old stove works. These are considered historical, but I actually look, it looks to me like these are actually built by, say, the pioneers or the later settlers. I don't think that these, with these mismatched rocks and things, this isn't that hard to explain or do. And usually they're not that tall compared to, say, this one. Like, give me a fucking break that you're going to build a log cabin and then you're going to build a school like this. And the kids are going to walk from their log cabin homes into the school like this and not wonder how in the hell. Why would it be important to take all the time to put this up here, these little ornaments. Why add any style to it at all if your home is a log cabin? You would make the school better than your home? Like, I doubt it. I like, see, this all makes sense. The rock, you can gather from anywhere. The stone, it doesn't need to be. When it's much more uniform and perfect, that's when it begs the question of how and where. And the old Del Bar product building, of course. See, like, this is incredible. And I'm glad to see that it is holding up just fine. A beautiful place. Now, do you remember when we looked down these streets earlier? Even then, when it was a black and white photo in 1920, it looked much better than this. This isn't much too later, or maybe this is a colorized version from even earlier. Uh, you know, it must be because there's no, at least I don't see any electric lines, yet they have lighting. That's an impressive way to light the street. These big Edison bulbs hanging out of the street. But yeah, and these here, but I don't see any electricity anywhere unless, so that's interesting. But something about this picture seems to be tampered with because unless I'm to expect that this pipe is just floating in the air, a magical pipe. Almost as if they were whiting out something and fucked up. Had to be. How else? You explain it. You explain it. Just amazing. You go to Pennsylvania today, you should expect something like this. A mix mash, a hodgepodge of random buildings that they claim to be built at the same time, which make no sense at all. Some of them are quite massive. Many of them are in disrepair, of course, and many of them have had the blessing of local artists. And then there's some that will be there probably forever, as far as we know it. Forever and forever. A beautiful place, a tragic place, but the way it's been run, I have no desire ever to visit Pennsylvania unless things turn around. While I would love to go there and visit any of these things, I just think that the inner city has just gone exactly the way that its political leaders want it to. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but... And that it's falling apart. It's completely turned over to the streets. It's allowed to be destroyed because they think they're going to be able to buy it all back once they get things their way. Once they eradicate the middle class, they're going to rebuy it back, sell it to their rich friends for even more money, refurbish the areas, and in the meantime, probably rid the world of a few of these pesky historic buildings that sort of shatter their little narrative. You know, that's just a side. That's just part of the hustle. And eventually, all the buildings that we're looking at now won't even be there. And it'll be like looking at Route 66, where it's just a string of abandoned old stories, really, that have no real meaning to them. Though I'd like to see them destroy stuff like this. Good God. That'll be quite the 
effort and really a sad day for America if ever they decide to get rid of these. As we know, there are some that will stand the test of time because they simply can't. It's too late. They can't destroy them. They don't own them or they do own them and they've moved into them or is this one boarded up? This one is boarded up. Ridiculous. Or they have become protected now and so they'll never be able to get rid of all of them. But the more they do, when people find out about it, masonry, when people finally come around to realizing what's been taken from us, hidden from us, hijacked from us, stolen from us, or lost from us. I don't think that the public will be very pleased when they learn. If they learn. I don't know. Until then, we're out here plugging away, plugging away. Weird motley, hmm, looks like Wheel of Fortune. And we'll try to just expose and explore and point out anything we can for as long as it takes us until some sort of result is reached. Until we can no longer communicate with each other fairly and freely. Or until there is a regime change, a global regime change, and we can share ideas fairly and freely. And till we basically overthrow the criminals that are running our countries. And yeah, for the most part, there are criminals running every single country. Any challenge of the narrative and up. Oh, you got assassinated. Up, oh, you got a heart attack. Up, oh, you disappeared. Up, oh, you had to step down. Up, oh, your election went completely wrongly, unfairly against you. And it's only until recently that America realized, oh my God, we have been played just as hard as any other country who we always criticize of not having a democracy. We don't have a democracy. We don't even have the definition of democracy, which is the mob rule. We don't even have that. We have a rigged system, rigged from the get-go, rigged from day one, and they just, due to a, several incidents happening and catching them off guard, they have lost control completely of the narrative. They have failed in their task. They are probably terrified of what will happen when they lose completely, which they will. It's already started. Crumb by crumb, the avalanche is starting to form, trickle by trickle, and there will be a tipping point. And when that tipping point comes, they will not be safe to walk the streets. I won't feel bad for them. And they get torn limb from limb, if there's any justice in the world. But who knows? I'm sure they've got some tricks up their sleeve. they are overlords that are giving them orders, because these puppets aren't anything but patsies, have been doing this a long time. They've got a few thousand year head start on us, so it's gonna take some time, some effort, possibly a miracle. This might seem like a very outlandish worldview, but if you look at it, the, what I'm describing is a parasitic hostile takeover of the human race. Now, we know parasites exist. There's a TED talk about it recently. It discusses the sea monkey, which is normally a small little independent thing, prefers isolation. However, it will sometimes it'll encounter this tapeworm and the tapeworm causes it to blow up in size to turn bright red and to gather in numbers not for safety reasons but because the tapeworm can only propagate its species i.e. have sex in the stomach of a flamingo therefore it has commandeered the biological makeup of the sea monkey caused it to want to gather in groups caused it to grow in size and be, appear bright red thereby attracting flamingos thereby succeeding in its mission and the parallel I can draw would be us abandoning the countrysides where the air is cleaner and thicker and the water is better and pure and we have no traffic and we can grow our own food and all that. Abandoning that to live in the inner cities where air quality is shit, crime is high, traffic and inconvenience are everywhere. There's another uh, parasite that is referenced in this TED Talk, which is uh, a particular type of uh, wasp that lays an egg inside of a caterpillar. It will hatch its eggs inside. But as the larvae use this caterpillar as a host, when they hatch, some of them will sort of stay behind inside the caterpillar and, and use it, you know, basically kind of pulling strings like a, like a puppet and use its body at this point, its, its shell of an existence to thrash around and fight off anything that comes to prey on the caterpillar. To in order to protect its siblings that are still, you know, in the larval process inside. But parallel you could draw from that would be parasite that is causing people to defend that which is killing it. You've got Toxo, of course, which is a single-celled organism which gets inside the minds of rats, and it convinces them to approach cats as if they were friendly, like, hey, buddy, like they're going to have a beer. And it causes them to enjoy the smell of cat urine, which is a miracle in its own right. And the cat, obviously, often simply kills the and eats the mouse. Uh, it's a mouse, actually, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Therefore, Therefore, Toxo wins. It gets to have sex inside of the cat's gut, which was its goal the entire time. And there's another parasite, which is a wasp, that goes into the back of a roach's head. And it sort of feels around in there for these neuron receptors. And what it will do is it will remove the ability to... It doesn't kill the roach. It just removes its ability to walk away. It's desire to run away. And so then the wasp kind of takes it by the antenna and guides it. Come on, kitty kitty. Down into its lair. Where no doubt horrific insect kingdom things happen. Like things are... Eggs are laid inside of it and it's devoured from the inside over a period of weeks. Or who knows? Some other horrific... Thing thing that you only find in the insect kingdom, now, which I find to be particularly rife with parasites. And you think about that, a parasite that could basically turn something into a docile beast that just has no fear and can't run away. So all these parasites, you know, Toxo being the most 
terrifying because it's a single-celled organism. And yet it can take over the brain of a mouse or a rat, which their brains are so similar, at least in structure, that they use them for tests to test uh, how things would happen on a human brain. So it leads me to the question, are we under a parasite evasion that is undetectable to us, forcing us to gather in large numbers, forcing us to destroy our own habitat, forcing us to defend that and not even have fear of it or have the not even have the ability to break free of it, causing us to in- be attracted to things that are not safe for us, causing us to approach the enemy as if it were a friend. If a single-celled organism can do that, what can a complex, what might a complex parasite be able to do? Or a society or group of complex parasites. When scientists tell you that up to two-thirds of all known relationships in the animal kingdom in the world are parasitic by nature, the chances are actually high that we are indeed under parasitic invasion. But the parasite operates in a circle graph that overlaps between its victim. And the difference between a parasite and other relationships is that the parasite actually needs the victims. When something needs something else, depends on it for its survival, it actually, though it may not know it, is in control of the situation. It actually has the power because we don't need the parasite, but it needs us. And this is something that they are terrified of us finding out. So whether it's a governmental body, whether it's an alien or demonic invasion, no matter what it is, if its true relationship with us is a parasite, then we have the power once we wake up and become aware of its existence. So all is not lost. We're not victims any more than we want to be. We're just ignorant. We just don't know that we have the tapeworm. So if, if the parallels I'm drawing are correct, then my belief is that we simply need to become aware of the parasite and make it go away by simply not feeding into it, not performing the behaviors that it needs to survive, not allowing it to take foot, and it will simply move on. You have no power here, parasite. And I think it depends on the spell simply being broken, people just becoming aware it exists, flicking it off. And this is the fear that they have. This is why we're more powerful than we believe. Doesn't mean we're all magicians or wizards. Doesn't mean we have some extra power. It means that the power to expel that which bothers us and embrace a better lifetime. It exists within us. We don't have to do anything extra. Now, it would help if we got some external power, some external source of assistance from some divine entity or perhaps angelic interference or whichever it may be. Of course, that would help. But that help may never come. So what choice do we have? The choice to just sort of slump down and be defeated and allow this to happen or to stand up straight and tall and grab as much of the world around you, as many people as you can, and push on and carry it all. I know what decision I've made. I know I'm not alone. I know there's a lot more people than you would imagine that have the same outlook, the same determination. And that's what all this is all about. Trying to spread the fire in my own little way, whatever little way I can. If it's through making jokes about old buildings and taking the immense amount of time to gather all these ridiculous photographs and all these ridiculous places and go through it, well, then it's time well spent. If this isn't the perfect photograph to show that the, man, there's more to this world than meets the eye. This is fantastic. Just bricks lying around. Like, <laughs> like it's incredible. And then we built a little flimsy wooden fence on top of it, as if that could keep anything out. I know I got side railed on this a little bit. Maybe took it to a little bit of a weirder, heavier place than just looking at old building pictures, but so be it, America. I stand by my statements. And there are a lot more of these photographs than I actually thought. There's an old octagonal one there. Still with the little ornament on the top. There's a beauty. God damn. Trying to make that today. It's not in the budget, sir. But what is in the budget, Winifred? Uh, maybe this? <laughs> what is that, a furnace? I call it a furnace. Like Frank Furnace, right? Uh, sir, we can afford to make this, if that's suitable. Suitable for what, Winifred? For pigs? I was thinking for a family of four. <laughs> Who makes this budget? Put them to the sword. Like the modern day sword. Like the pen, you know? The pen is mightier than the sword. I mean, fire them. Fill out the forms, the term forms. Make it happen. The king of Pennsylvania shan't be living in a wooden cupboard. Birthday candle building. Ah, yes, the garden. This lovely garden. Damn, it's gorgeous. Just gorgeous. The Entwining together the twin phoenixes. What opulence. What beautiful building. Really is gorgeous. It's a fucking high school. Junior high school. A high school. Oh, thank you so much to the local artist again for just just really putting the exclamation point on the shithole that Pennsylvania can be and is in certain areas. My God, that's a tragedy. Look at that. You know, if we can get up there and smash them. Probably encouraged. You guys see any historic sites you want to go fuck it up? Go ahead, dude. The mayor says it's cool. They're not going to prosecute. Douchebags. Beep! Hammer! Hammer beam! Four-year-olds were here. Four-year-olds were here. With no creativity. We're trapped in adult bodies. Keep out!
<laughs> if you gotta close up to read it though, you're already in, so what do you do? I didn't know, the sign's right there, but I couldn't read it till I was already in. Well, you're under arrest anyway. And really, I don't know if this proved anything about Pennsylvania. I feel like it's the same amount of level of trash buildings as it is beautiful ones. I mean, it's kind of cool to see the way that some of them are being used today, like that. Ignoring the weird tunnel that's going underneath it for whatever reason, which I'm sure has nothing to do with anything. Look away, look away. If that doesn't stand out in a modern day city, then pay me no mind, America. Just imagine rolling through the forest and just running into that. You do, you do, you see it everywhere. In Hawaii, there's a big sugar mill out there and, and the garden island that I was just blown away by. I was like, what? I'm gonna walk away from that. A steeple of power. Oh, right. The old armory. Wow. A billion fucking bricks. Uh, who in the got up there and graffitied on that. First of all, it's really ballsy. But also, what does it even say? Really ballsy to be so stupid. Yeah, bleh, 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 bleh. Jennifer, I love you. Bleh, 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 bleh. Yingling, really not a very good beer, but you know, it's very popular. I'm gonna give Pennsylvania what's Pennsylvania's. It's a glory hole for robots. <laughs> oh, it's coming out of a mouth too? Yeah, I'm sure that they initially wanted this pipe to come out of the mouth here. How crude, how disgusting. You know, I like the way these old bridges have just rubble underneath them, like old block, as if this is the second incarnation of it. Get off from under there, Jimmy, it's about to fall. Looks like they haven't updated these bridge pictures in a while, huh? Oh, this is great. A historical road. Well done. God, look at the graffiti in the background. It just, you're gonna take this nice paint job here. Back here, you're gonna be like, fuck you. Deceive. Tape. Deceive. Bofa. Bank of America? I don't know what they're trying to say. Famous Kotwiener. Famous Wiener Lunch. Damn it, the graffiti, they're writing Wiener all over the wall. Famous Wiener Lunch. I don't know, I, don't, I just wouldn't call it that today. You know, words change, you know? <laughs> they just, they just change. The meanings of them change sometimes. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's just bad connotations. And as irreverent as I am, still, I wouldn't name my business Wiener. Just saying. Even if it was my last name. Well, I'll tell you this. If it was my last name, it wouldn't be my last name. Not for very long, anyway. We're gonna ignore this. Nothing to see there, folks. Need some work? Doesn't need work at all. For the shoulders and sailors. Doubtful. Bottling house. And I mean, just looks so out of place. Very cool looking. State farm, I see. Taking over where the old Colonial National Bank was, see? From one hand to the next. From one scam artist to the next. From the banks to the insurance companies. They're all one happy team. And I'm not sure what was here, but I'm gonna guess that it was in the shape of a rooftop. Not sunken in at all. Nope, nope, nope. Can't hear it. That's a church. Gee, I wonder how they got that. County courthouse, not surprisingly, looks great. And this was not part of the county courthouse, so it gets treated like used toilet paper. Don't understand who wouldn't want those buildings. I swear they let them get like that. And this is a lasting remnant of one man's dream. The crumbling ruins of an 1800s grist mill. That's kind of brutal. A lasting remnant of one man's dream. It's a lasting remnant of all of our dreams. You don't know what I dream about. Stay off my head. I don't think I will. What, you don't dream of peace? You don't dream of a world living more harmony? Oh, uh, this is the one we're going to protect. We're going to protect this old uh, little wooden building with a glass. I mean, you know, that's the only one. Anything else? No, no, no. Everything else can go to hell. There's a five dollar fine for riding or driving over this bridge faster than a walk. Five dollars. Now, that ain't the harshest penalty. Oh, dude, we've seen this one before, dude. Dave and Carrie, Dave's still a fucking douchebag. Oh, this is that one that we were looking at from above last time. It looked like a strange uh, funeral procession. Very unique. The Dropsy College Building. Dropsy. Referring to what I did to all my college classes. Thank God. One of the best decisions I ever made. Or else I'd be like a bumbling fool out here like thinking, you know, what we don't, what we don't know, the correlation is not imply causation. Out here lecturing people from over the top of my foamy, highly sought after imperial IPA. Which, I say that mocking, but really, I, I do like those. Enter the courtyard of unmentionable terror! An enduring light to guide us in unity. Amen. Jasper, move your fucking cart out the way! We're trying to take Patcher's hair! And what is this, another armed insurrection? Oh! You know how you can tell it's an armed insurrection? No one has guns. That's how you know. No one has any weapons. That's the definition, according to Congress. So anytime you go anywhere without anything, without any weapons, be prepared. Even if it's a public place, you will be accused of being in an armed insurrection. They will lock you up and beat you up. You may lose an eyeball. That's the lesson I've learned. Hey, who put a window in the middle of our sign? What's this guy doing hanging around graveyards all day? Excuse me, mister. Oh my god, he's been standing there so long his feet are embedded in the soil. Well, where do we go from here? Uh, it's so far of a draw. Oh wait, no, it's not that far. A communications technology high school. Of course. Another school. Of course. Why wouldn't schools be so ridiculous? Res erected in 1741. First place of worship in the Bethlehem was on the second floor, of course, because of that basement. We we know, we know, we already know. Man, these old world buildings still just standing out. Standing the test of time is what they were. Yes, sir. And, uh, quite remarkable. Still impressive. No matter what you call it. No matter what you name it. No matter what you pretend. So, so many structures. You still gotta give it to them. While the thousands of them are gone, there are still plenty to see there and be amazed at. You could be like that.
black guy just exploring everywhere. Look at him. He's just looking all around, looking at everything. He's basically our spirit animal. How many trash buckets can you stand up on in, Benny? <laughs> I'm going to make a pile of like 500 of them. Jenga. I'm not coming out. Let me guess. Another high school. Of course it is. Makes perfect sense to make a castle into a high school and then pretend there's no such thing as castles. Duh. It's what we do. The Foundry Historic Hotel in Bethlehem. Here stood the George Frederick Beckel House. Stood. It's gone now. Just like my patience with this state. Of course. The Humane Fire Company. Don't worry. We put out fires in a humane fashion. We make sure that they don't have any fear or pain in their last moments. We gently douse them with water. Whisper sweet nothings in their, in their ear. Integrity! Abandonment! Liberty! Mystery! Peeping Tomery! Poor photography! With the power line right here in the middle of everything! Pack rattery! Curiosity! Pyramidery! Pyramid? This is how it looks like it. It's called the Johnston Flood National Memorial. Sure, nothing says flood like a giant pyramid in the middle of the forest. This is the place, of course, with that horrible flood caused by the elite bastards who had the dam up in the Jekyll Club. They were poorly maintained, or deliberately maintained poorly, Trevor. And <laughs> a horrible, horrible flood situation happened, we're told. Cool building. And all the townsfolk were washed away, along with hundreds of miles of barbed wire, and the whole writhing mess was pinned against the bridge, which then collapsed, and then it all caught fire. So if you didn't drown, or were crushed beneath the weight of hundreds of animals and homes and lumber and steel being washed down the hill. If you weren't sliced to ribbons and bled out by all the hundreds of miles of barbed wire, then chances are you were probably wrapped up in barbed wire, pinned against the bridge, and then set on fire, along with everything else. So, really, quite disturbing story. Particularly nightmarish, and you wonder if it was deliberate. Yet, many buildings obviously still survived, because... So even that nonsense, still many things survived from it. Obviously, because Johnstonville still has a number of historic buildings and churches and cathedrals, and even in the old pictures you can see where they all stood. Curious why we're always going to use this symbol everywhere. Just curious. These are great pictures. Liberty Bell Shrine, huh? But then it's outdoors. Hey, bro, do you got a dollar I can borrow, bro? No. Hey, bro, do you know what to find Third Street? No. How about 11th Street? No. What about 14th Street? No. You don't know anything, do you? So? <laughs> Stupid metal statue, he doesn't know jack shit. Whoa, whatever hell that was. Caught in a time loop. Well, the reality is just a bunch of blurry logos. It's just like I've always dreamed. The Mason-Dixon line will be marked out by this hair obelisk which we've chosen for that shape just so no one could sit on it. Or if they could, we'd know that they were some sort of deviant. The ladders to nowhere. Actually, I think those were gardens looking back. And there are a lot more of these historical photos than I originally thought, or I wouldn't have set out to do this. Or maybe I would have, but I might have been edited a little bit better. And this is the most impressive of them all. This is the uh, furnace ruins, of course, as you can tell. Clearly. <laughs> In that case, there are furnace ruins all over every forest I've ever gone to. Wow, this is amazing. This is kind of comical, the way you keep going up. It's like a Russian dolls, they're smaller as they go up. What a gorgeous house, though. Shit. And this one, too, looking just really just like shit. One man's trash is another man's treasure. You know they say that. Yeah, they do. Hey. Hey, buddy, you awake? Hey. Are you awake, bro? Don't shoot me, dude. I'm Jesus. Damn. That is some real dedication to douchebaggery. I'm really committed to being a fucktard. No, dummy, I said build a balcony at the highest window. Not there. Wow, that, all that's holding that up is these little rods? <laughs> I definitely wouldn't be going on that balcony. That'd be the last balcony you ever went on. This building possesses national significance. Does it? Does it really? The new era. The new era brings terror. Ain't nothing new about that. Erected, resurrected, 1769. Repaired, 18 something too. Sure. A little weird. A castle! This one's actually the one that's called a castle. Site of the college that was chartered in 1857. And they made it pink. Of course, the ladies' college made pink. How sexist. How somethingist of you. You couldn't get any closer, huh? This is gonna be abandoned. This. Okay, dude. The Nugent Home for Baptists is just abandoned to this fate. That's ridiculous. Maybe they truly don't care. Maybe the idea is literally to destroy all of history that they possibly can. Of course that's the idea. How am I this idealistic still to believe that anything could actually be saved? I'm sure the guy that invented the telephone just happened to have a last name of Bell, huh? Give me a fucking break. And this is a photograph taken just last year of the Oscar Young grocery store. Tasty cake. No, thank you. Very impressive building. Old Main Upland. It's the old Main Widener. And the old post office. Another modern photo. Snuck in there. Here's the old canal, looking just as old world as ever before. The canal's limestone-run aqueduct ruins. 
It's been ruins longer than it was in service. That should tell you everything. I shouldn't say that. That should tell you everything. Let's tell you some things. Meaning there's no reason to abandon it. Especially if you took all the time to, and effort to build it. This is now a hospital. Philadelphia Sketch Club. Oh, those are the guys making those beautiful drawings all around the city. Wow, they tried to make this as boring as possible. You couldn't do it, could you? You just, you just couldn't do it. How this ever gets walked away from, I don't know. Except it's in Philadelphia. And Philadelphia is run like absolute shit. Possibly the worst city in America. Which is sad. Because it should be amongst the best. It's definitely the most historic and it should just look gorgeous like it used to but no there's idiots in charge and their only saving grace is that they've managed to convince half the population or not even half that they aren't idiots they've managed to fool them because they have the media in their pocket you go home and watch an hour of the night news every night and you think you're informed yeah, i'm sorry you sit around and listen to somebody lie to you for an hour and until we turn that around you know the easiest way is just to just unplug from that turn it off and you'd be amazed at what people around you have to say be amazed at what the truth is when you listen to actual people stories and the people that are on the ground places. People that have actually taken the time that aren't given a voice. Places like Twitter. If you still believe that Twitter is the hub of information, I, I'm sorry. You're, you're looking at a place that's occupied by like 80% of them are bots. Literally fake bots. Run on algorithms that just focus on keywords and when they see them they churn out a pre-typed response. It's to sit around and expose the bots all day long. After one time I got in an argument with one for three freaking days and then it made a mistake and I realized, oh wow I've been arguing with a freaking bot. So I learned how to spot them. It was overwhelming. Shortly after that my account got removed and I felt like this guy. You just show, you just point me in the direction and I'm gonna hell. But alas, there was no one. I was told the official reason for losing my account of 11 years was because I uh, told John McCain, or not even told him, I said that he deserved a gut punch and that was wishing violence on people. Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen actual beheadings on there, and I'm sure when Donald Trump had COVID that there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people wishing he would die openly. <laughs> like, they sold their accounts. I wished a dead person would get a gut punch, and I got removed from encouraging violence. Okay. Sounds to me like you guys just didn't really like me. Every junior high school should look like that in the doorway. Well, Pennsylvania, this has been quite a jaunt, although high speed, through all of your amazing buildings. And yeah, okay, so there's a lot more of them standing than I initially figured, but some of them quite impressive, many of them overrun. There's something on my roof. Wow, that's massive. Very impressive. Don't look at us, it's over there in that window. Aw, I dropped my drone in the river. It's been real, America. I now must go investigate what's on my roof. I hope this was wildly entertaining, or at least somewhat useful. I hope I kind of gave, you know, a lift to the Pennsylvania, which I was uh, battering pretty badly. And I, uh, I'll see you soon.